I'm headed down to my new plot of land. Sipsy comes running out of the woods down there. He's got this in his mouth. It's uh, I don't know if he caught it. It doesn't have any marks on it. I have no idea how it died. I Maybe he just grabbed it and throttled it and had a successful hunt. So Sipsy just literally killed us dinner. <laughs> come on, Sipsy, come on. Hey, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. You'll get him, don't worry. This definitely seems like a good omen. I'm not superstitious, but you know, if I was, I would definitely think this was a sign of, of good things to come. <laughs> That's my boy. Come on, Sipsy, time to go. My new land is, is located uh, quite a bit closer to an area where I know I can hunt beavers. There's moose, maybe ducks, and generally just good hunting. If I can build like a small kind of hunting slash trapping cabin, you know, just a real basic shelter, that could make it easier for me to hunt throughout the winter. Alex Javor's main hunting grounds are two hours from his A-frame cabin by foot a dangerous journey in the harsh Alaskan winters. In order to protect himself from being stranded along the way, Alex plans to build a safe haven shelter halfway from his cabin to the hunting grounds. This is kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah. I guess you just might call it artistic or something. I like to kind of like put it where like kind of where the land wants it anyway. You know, so we have like this kind of this natural clearing. You come in here, clear out some of these trees, kind of clear the area out a little bit, and use those same trees to build uh, kind of just like a really simple um, shelter, basically. Something, just something I can build a fire in, maybe put a small camp stove in. And I'm gonna get back. Tomorrow's gonna be a, a long day, uh, a lot of hard work. Conditions in Alaska, are they ever ideal? Uh, it all depends on your point of view and what your expectations are. You can't have any expectations. You just kind of got to deal with whatever's thrown at you. Ideal conditions are all relative. <laughs> this is generally where I have my firewood. And uh, as you can see, there's not a lot happening. It's a pretty sad firewood stash. It's 20 degrees out, and winter has come, and there's no firewood put away. So it means we go cut firewood. Firewood is key mainly because that's how we heat two of our buildings. And then on top of that, and probably the most important thing is we cook uh, fish every day for the dogs, and we use wood to boil the fish. It's an essential thing for just feeding the dog. We have a lot of cutting ahead of us. It's a beautiful day, so we're going to take advantage of that. It's just got to be done. Got to make it a top priority starting now. Let's see if we can find some firewood. All right, well, this is the trail that goes up. So Edith's still visiting your family in Sweden, so I'm out here by myself. Definitely missing a piece of the puzzle. Edith takes care of a lot of stuff around here and makes my life a lot easier, so I'm definitely missing her. But I have to work. This is the killing fields right here. This is where all the trees are laying down on the ground. Yeah, I think this is my path here. The lifestyle here is basically nonstop. Even though I work way more than the average person does in civilization, it's totally worth it to me. Out here, you just figure out a way to do it. And I think that's what really draws me to this lifestyle. You don't call anybody. You don't ask for help. You just get it done. There's no give up out here. I think that's the general trail. Looks decent enough. <laughs> We'll do a little trial run with the machine without a load, and we'll uh, give it a go here. I'm going to really have to regulate how big a loads that I can take. 
with a heavy load, it can flip the machine, you can do all kinds of things. It's the lack of deep snow is our biggest challenge right now. Can't really change that, so we just gotta kinda work around it. Pretty smooth sailing. Got a trail in. It works. Progress, one step at a time. It's almost better than taking them to school, learning real life application lessons that they can carry into adulthood. All right, you guys ready to go? Uh-huh. Gilbert, over here. Ellie, come on. My kids are the next generation. And it's really important for me as a father to teach them all the skills that I know for living out in the bush. Today, we're heading out to a beaver pond that's next to the McCarthy Road. These beavers have been cutting down trees, dropping them across the road. So we need to go harvest a couple of them and take it as an opportunity to teach my kids some new skills. You guys ready to get some beaver bait? Uh-huh. Do you know what beavers like to eat, guys? Tree. Green trees. Do you know what we call cottonwoods? Huh. Beaver candy, because they like it so much. I think it's important to teach my children everything that I've learned up to this point, and, and hopefully more as I get older. That way someday, if they choose to live this lifestyle, they will be well equipped to live in a place like this. As a kid, I learned by just getting out and doing it. Yes! I believe it's important, especially children living in rural areas like we are, that they learn life skills. All right, guys, let's go trap us some beavers. You jump on a snow machine, and those things will fail you time and time again. It's soulless. You jump on an old-fashioned freight sled with a bunch of Malamutes that look like a picture from 100 years ago in Alaska. That's got soul. I call this the 15-gallon shuffle. Five gallons of food. You go back around five gallons of water. You go back around one more time and pick up five gallons of poop. The past week of dog training by dog sled, I had about a foot of snow pack to work with. Now all the snow is melted. I can't run my sleds no more, but their training has to continue. But I've got a winter caribou hunt coming up. So now is the time to switch over to a fat tire bike and just hope and wait for more snow. Chores are all done, now it's time to get on the trail and check it after this bad windstorm in this warm weather. So when I clear trail and I hike around, I like to bring my retired sled dog, Nina. She is 11 years old, and she is the grandmother to all these puppies down the hill, which are gonna be great sled dogs this year. Nina. 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 She's going uh, deaf. <laughs> During this warm weather, the winds came, rains came, trees were breaking. I'm going to go ahead and do a sweep of my local trails and then jump on a bike and start training up. Winters can get rough. It's dark, it's cold, and a lot of people just get holed up. For me, these dogs, they get me out, they get me moving around, and their excitement rubs off onto me. This season belongs to them. Here, I got a birch tree that's about falling down over the trail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one down just to be on the safe side. Any sort of wind when this wood gets brittle, it could snap and fall in the coldest weather with just a little bit of wind. 
So I'm going to try to cut this with the handsaw. Come here, Nina. I need you to sit right here. Come here. Sit. She's so deaf, I have to give her hand signals. Since this is leaning, it does have a possibility to kick back. It never feels like a, a safe thing to do when I have to clear stuff leaning like this. But I might as well get to work, because it's going to be a while. Come here, Nina. Come on. Nina. Hey, Nina. Go, go! Come here, Nina. Come on. Nina. Hey, Nina. Go, go! Nina, you're grounded. No video games. That thing fell quick. It was leaning so strong, I only got about halfway in before it, it snapped. And it's a likely deal that this would have fell over the trail sometime. And I don't want it to fall on the trail when I'm on it. It's good doing this physical labor with hand tools. I don't even use a internal combustion for really anything. When you get out here, it's a little harsh at first splitting wood by hand, hauling water by hand, running a dog team instead of running a snowmobile. It's a game for me to not spend money on your things that you want me to buy. That's the game for me. All right, we got this big birch tree cleared off the trail. Time to keep going. I got four more miles of trail to do. I'll sleep good tonight. What's it like being a father, bringing your two kids out and teaching them some new lessons? Stressful. All right, guys, let's go. Bringing out the kids on the ice is stressful. Safety is number one on an expedition like this. I don't want my kids to fall in the water. I don't want them to get wet, which could put them at the risk of hypothermia. Are you guys getting wet? No. Good. You know, it's zero degrees outside. It's very easy to get cold and not be able to recover from that. We will get cold. Is it cold? Ah. When I was about the same age as Gilbert, on one of the sets we were doing when I was a little kid, I actually fell in the hole. My father reached down and grabbed me before I went under the ice. And so I've always been really careful since then not to be too close to the edge of the water there. Stay away from the hole, guys. You don't want to fall into that. Once we cut a hole in the ice, we stick the cottonwood pole down in the center. You put that down, and they just they go nuts over it. We'll shove it down in the mud as far as it'll go. And then we have two dead cross poles that we stick over it. We lash the cottonwood pole to the dead poles, and then we hang snares off the dead poles. Man, that ought to stay in place. All right, guys, let's grab the snares and start hanging them in there. OK. Oh, got killed. I bought a oh. oh, hey, we snared a dog. <laughs> we got you, Piper. <laughs> Hey, that was really loud and screechy. Well, that was pretty funny. Uh-huh. I'm hoping that all of these little skills that I teach them will set them up for a great future if 
someday they choose to live out in the bush. That will be bad. That will be bad. <laughs> it's entirely their choice, but it really is a pretty good life out in the woods. It's, it's basically constant work. It's a lot of problem solving, a lot of improvising, making things up. It's the way of life that I love and, and thrive at. OK, so yeah, this is the stuff. Unfortunately, it's all buried in the snow, but lots of good firewood. A super heavy load going down that trail would not be a very good idea, mainly just because we don't have enough snow. I'm going to want to take as much as I possibly can down with every load. I know that I don't want to be there all day long, so we're going to find the happy medium. If you hurt yourself out here, you're here a long ways from help. If you cut your finger off, you're probably not going to have that finger anymore. It's, it's just the way it is out here. Well, so much for a conservative load, but it's worth a shot. Worst thing is that it overtakes a snow machine and flips over. You got to live on the edge, but not that close to the edge. I think we'll be OK. Famous last words. feels awesome to have the first load of wood off the mountain. It's totally doable. And once we get more snow, it'll be, I don't think, a problem at all. It swings around quite a bit, but we made it down no problem. I don't think I'd want to haul much heavier of a load than, than that one. Living out here, living this kind of lifestyle, efficiency is super important. You just got to try and make the best out of every trip wherever you're going around here. We're going to be able to have a nice warm cabin tonight, so it's a start. This will last us a few days. <laughs> we'll get a few more loads so this pile will grow, and then it'll shrink. <laughs> and then it'll grow again, hopefully. More firewood to get. You know, some people, especially when you're kind of miserable and exhausted and cold and wet, they might want to know, like, no, don't you like miss hot showers and warm rooms and stuff like that now? And honestly, I don't at all. <laughs> I don't think about it. That just comfort and convenience just doesn't mean anything to me. After finding a suitable location, Alex must now harvest enough viable trees to build his hunting shelter. But with daylight and temperatures quickly fading, it's imperative that Alex use every hour wisely in order to get his cabin built before it's too late. This is going to be a good amount of work. I think the fastest I could do this would be uh, probably three days, realistically. I'm going to make this guy fall this way just because it's a clear path. No obstructions. But I'm going to try and get it done in two days. But they're going to be really busy days. So I should have everything I need in here. My goal is to get about 36 good logs for the walls. And then I can use 
pretty much any dink that it wants for the roof. Well, I like this might be fine for the for the wall. Definitely be good for the roof. One of the big challenges I'm facing when I do this work is it's a pretty warm, which you think would be nice, but uh, it means all the snow, it falls on me and then it melts and then I get really wet. So then if I need to stop and take a break because I'm getting tired, uh, I get really cold pretty quickly. You know, within an hour, you could have hypothermia. So the only thing to do is keep working, keep going. It's not good to push too far into being exhausted when you're doing dangerous work like this. Uh, pushing to the point where my hands are going to slip, I'm going to you know, slice myself with my own axe. Still got a lot, long ways to go. I don't know if I'll be able to cut 36 down today. We'll see, but I'll just keep working. It's really easy to become lazy, especially in modern life. Everything's designed for our convenience. Every time we increase technology to benefit our convenience, we kind of get a little more disconnected from the earth. Just by going back 50 years and cutting my wood with a saw and an ax. Ooh, it's heavy. That just gives me a lot more appreciation for modern lifestyle. And just so it's a little bit uncomfortable. You know, it's, it's work. But I feel like it keeps you from getting lazy or taking things for granted. enough work for one day, I think. I'll probably need some more of the, maybe not, I might have enough. We'll see. Well, I better get home before I get cold. So, I'm feeling pretty exhausted. Today I've made a huge mess. I'll have to clean it up. Tomorrow, the real struggle begins. Hunting with a team of Alaskan Malamutes, it's just priceless. Uh, I couldn't picture my life now without hunting caribou by dog team. All right, bike feels good. Time to flip out. Today's a good day. We've got the trail cleared, got the studded tires on this thing, and I'll just keep running dogs until they're all run. All right, I'm gonna start with the two rudest, biggest, strongest jerks in the lot. The wheel dogs, the ones that don't listen well. Snoop and Kyron. I gotta get out of here in one piece. My last run with Snoop and Kyron, they were so excited and they were so amped up they slammed me down onto the ground. They ripped the chain off the bike. Being three or four times the size of a race dog, if they slam their harnesses when I least expect it, I'm going flying off a sled. It's rough running dogs, but it humbles you too. You gotta get a good hold on that boy. Ugh. Ugh. He's too strong for his own good. It's been about three days since they've ran, so they're gonna be really amped up. The anxiety is gonna be high. The dogs are gonna be screaming, howling, barking. It's a mess, but if I can get out of the yard upright on this bike, I'll be good to go. Stay, stay, stay. Stay. Whoa. Whoa. Holy Get up there. Whoa. Whoa. Holy Good boys. Good boys. All right, we got out the door. My knee is sore, but I'll be all right. These sled dogs, these Alaskan Malamutes, there's something about traveling with these dogs that seems more real to me than the automobile on the asphalt road. All right, the dog's gates look good. 
We're going at about a seven mile an hour pace. They're both in unison. They're not running too hard. They're not lunging. They're just hoofing it. This time of the year to not have snow is so weird. But the training continues by Fat Tire Bike. Human power, dog power, Manzo Malamutes. A little bike ride in the birch forest. People pay, you know, tons and tons of money at the gym or, you know, the trainers or whatever to keep them in shape. Out here, just normal life keeps you in shape and, and cutting wood is just part of normal life. Yeah, beautiful day, nice and chilly. Time to buck up some wood. Well, here is a big sack of firewood, lots of dog food, and warm temperatures. But we have to deal with whatever comes at us, and, and wealth is, is definitely it's another relative term. You have to be able to, to take the punches and get back up and keep going forward. Technology allows us to do all the things that we have to do in a more efficient way. But it's definitely a good workout. Splitting wood. If I make it to my mid 70s here, I'll be a happy man. I can't split this piece of wood. I'm never gonna make it here to my mid 70s. Just the whole purpose of cutting firewood is going to warm you four or five times before you actually get it to the wood stove. It's definitely therapeutic at times. I'm kind of checked out away from normal society and normal everyday nine to five life. Not knowing what the next challenge we're going to have to overcome and what the next thing is going to be. The uncertainty of this life, I think, is what I enjoy most about it. That's it. Last cuts for this pile. Oh, yeah, well, got a little supply. It looks good to have a wood pile around here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see a warm cabin right there. I've always enjoyed being outside from the time I was a little kid. And so it's great seeing my kids learning to enjoy the outdoors and the cold and the snow and just everything about being out in the fresh, clean air. Who's excited that we get to check beaver sets on Ellie's fourth birthday? Me. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's kind of a special day because it's Ellie's birthday. It's pretty unique to be able to take my daughter out and go check beaver sets. She seems pretty jazzed about it. And I don't know very many four-year-old girls who go beaver trapping with their fathers on their birthday. Guys, I see the poles tipped over. You know what that means? Trap the beaver. It means the beaver's been chewing on it. All right, let's go check it. All right, I'm checking the ice here with my ice spud to make sure it's safe to walk here. There's no guarantees that we'll be successful. Huh. Well, let's take a peek and see what's in there. There's a 50-50 shot that we could come back with food or not come back with food. There's definitely a sense of anticipation and just not knowing what's going to happen. I love trapping season. Oh, geez. Daddy, what is those? I have no idea what those are. Oh, geez. Daddy, what is those? I have no idea what those are. Never seen bugs like that in a pond, ever. Like, that is crazy. And they're not dead. 
I don't see any beaver. It appears like we might have got skunked. Not a single beaver, just a bunch of bugs. Well, let's pull it up and just take a look. <laughs> look at that, right down at the bottom. So our snares were right at the top of the ice and they hung down about a little over a foot. So somewhere in this range. So that's where our snares were. And the beaver was clean down here. So he came to the set and he took our bait, but he took it where we didn't have any snares to catch him. He done outsmarted us. It's a great lesson for the kids to learn that you can't necessarily be successful every single time you go into the woods. It's pretty disappointing, but just getting out with them, whether we're successful or not, is what makes this trip a success. Daddy, you see the bugs I got up? Yep. You just reduced the bug population by several million next summer, probably. You ready to go for a little sled ride? Come on, Ellie. It's on me. Don't walk in the hole. We might not have gotten a beaver today, but it's Ellie's birthday, and so uh, we need to have some fun with her and Gilbert. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Our playground out here is limitless. We live in the middle of a 13 million acre park. <laughs> we may not have swing sets in our park, but we do have some pretty awesome hills to go sledding on and plenty of snow to make that happen. It's been a learning process for those dogs and myself, but it's in their blood. They, they know what to do from hundreds, if not thousands of generations. You want to go again? You want to go again? You can't knock a dog for high motivation. Time to finish up the final run of the day. Lead dog Mao, the little female Cleo, and one of their puppies, Red. See the guy chewing on his chain? We're gonna run that goofball over there. Let's do this. Next up is hooking up two veterans and one pup. And the pup's lucky because it's his mom and dad. So they'll be on the same brain wave, hopefully, theoretically. This is impossible to put a harness on this guy. Training puppies is probably one of the most frustrating thing ever. People think puppies are cute, and I just look at them like, oh my god, I got a lot of work ahead of me. This is actually makes for a good sled dog. The most spastic one of the bunch is also the hardest working pup. And maybe someday this guy might be a lead dog. You never know. I need you guys to teach this boy well, all right? <laughs> Might be hectic with three dogs on a bike, but I need two veterans to teach a dog what's right from wrong. But still, puppies do all kinds of crazy stuff, so this might be a hectic run. <laughs> Go get him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to get a little bit of snow coming back. It's promising. Maybe after a couple of more good storms, I'll be back on the sled. We've got about two miles in. We got to keep him moving. The more he runs, the calmer he'll get. This puppy has good focus. It's very rare for a dog to be this young and to be this focused on being a sled dog. And every time I run this puppy, he's gonna get a little bit more focused and he's gonna put all his energy to good use. Good dogs. I find working with these animals just as therapeutic as it is for the animals running the miles. As a Iraq war veteran with PTSD, it really helps me cope with a lot of my trauma 
and it, it really excites me watching puppies grow up and be strong, confident, courageous sled dogs, and I love it. I think to live out here, you have to be pretty stubborn and bullheaded sometimes, uh, just, to, just to get through you know, tough challenges. At the same time, if you go too far, if you're not able to back out into a, a wider perspective, you can get yourself in trouble that way. Gonna need an ax. This morning, uh, I'm feeling good. I'm trying to get this cabin done before we get into the depths of winter. But now it's crunch time. I have to finish it and get it done quick. Get my hammer. Uh, maybe I don't need that. Today's task is going to be to start notching the logs, stacking them up, building the walls. With a chainsaw and ATV, I could just blast through the work and get it done quick. And uh, if the result is your only goal, that's cool. Uh, for me, it's the journey, not the destination. I'm going to say the stove is the kind of the back end of the cabin. So the back wall would be here. And then walls on either side. Just keep it real simple. I'm using just a really classic log cabin building technique. You can just think of it like a rectangle. A rectangle that's designed for me to crawl inside, sleep in, and stay warm. So it needs the room for me and a wood stove and a little extra room just to store some gear or something like that. This is a good technique because it doesn't require really any specialized tools. It's just built very simply by stacking up logs, uh, and then you put kind of a U-shaped notch in them so they fit over each other and nest on top of another log neatly. Let me just see what that's like. Oh, there. Good enough for government work. I'm just going to be eyeballing it, going real fast, even if it's not airtight. That's fine. It's just a survival shelter, really. Hopefully, can finish up. My joints hurt. I have no strength in my arms. Uh, gripping the axe feels unsafe. You know, it feels like I, I could drop it. I'm just exhausted. Oh, we're just putting on the final logs. That'll work. And then I'll start laying the roof in between. Uh, before I do the roof, though, I got to frame in the door, cut that out. Yeah, I am pretty, pretty exhausted. Uh, yeah, we're getting there, just about there. Left my hammer at the cabin. I'll try to make use of my ax. I can't do it like this. I can't drop 500 nails like that. That'll take a year. Um, left my hammer at the cabin. Trying to hammer nails with an ax is uh, exercising frustration. So I think I'm gonna head up there real quick, and get my hammer. It'll be worth it. In the modern world, you you say time is money, but out here, time's all you got, so you don't want to waste it. All of this comes at a cost, and it costs me a couple hours of daylight. There's never, never enough this time of year, but I'll try to make use of, of every hour I got left. There's only a couple hours of daylight. Uh, I don't prefer to work in the dark, so I'm going to get straight to it and work fast and furious and try to get as much work done as I can uh, before it gets dark. I call this my framing. Um, just hammer it in to hold these guys. 
then I'll saw right in between, and then we can lay the roof, I think. If you don't got patience, you're gonna get it. Because this is gonna take a while. What do you think, Sipsy? Do you want to go in there? It looks like a safe, cozy spot where you're protected on three sides. Kind of like a din. Oh, he's making a... There you go. If Sipsy approves, I'm happy. That's the only one that matters. The roof's really simple. I just take all the thinner trees that weren't big enough for walls and layer them across the top. On top of all that, I'm just gonna layer all these extra spruce fronds that we had around that will act as insulation. It's not particularly fire safe and I wanna keep rain out, but for a winter hunting cabin, it'll get the job done. I finished the cabin. Mostly I feel relief that the work's done, but I also am excited to uh, test it out, you know, kind of like a new toy and uh, see if it burns down immediately. It's working, it's working. It's just, I, I'm actually really looking forward to going hunting because I could definitely use the meat. Coming back and spend the night out here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be cool. Being out here, being out with the dogs or just being out cutting firewood just feels free. You guys hungry? You guys want something to eat? It takes a lot of work, but it's all worth it because of that feeling of, of freedom. Forward progress. Every day, that's all you gotta do is make a little forward progress. You want a little bit of fat? You gotta sit, sit. Good boy, you did good today. These sled dogs, they wanna go and they wanna explore. They reinvigorate my spirit. That's why I'm a dog musher for life. Until I'm an old man and my body can't move anymore, I'll be a dog musher until the end. Life for the Rollins out here in the middle of the wilderness is just beginning. One day at a time, one lesson at a time. Ta-da! Look what I made! I think what Caleb and I have out here is pretty special and unique. Happy birthday to you. And I really love that we were able to do that together and we created such a lovely place to call our home. Every day is a knockdown, drag out fight, but it's what we signed up for. Right now, the snow is coming back and the deep dark winter is coming upon us. We are the next generation of Alaskans. Our children are the future. Alaska is definitely a place for people who want to live in a continual challenge. Mother Nature doesn't quit, she doesn't tire, and the challenge never ends. 